Hello, Zach Murphy here, and thank you so much for taking the time to tune into my channel today. In today's teaching, I'm going to continue my series on the Gospel of John, and we're going to start into chapter 16 and look at verses 1 through 15. And we're going to talk more about the Holy Spirit. Um, in a previous teaching recently, we talked about the Holy Spirit in the Gospel of John, and there's another mention of the promise of the Holy Spirit here in John chapter 16, verses 1 through 15. So before I go any further, let me open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to share your word over social media. I pray, Lord, that everybody watching us is edified, Lord, that they are stirred to get into your word and study your word and to live out what your word says. And that this teaching will bring forth much good fruit for your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, and again, I'm covering John chapter 16, verses 1 through 15. And if you have been following along with this series, I encourage you to follow along with the entire series of the Gospel of John, because if you have a red-letter Bible and you look at the end of chapter 15, you see that the red letters continue all from 15 until chapter 16 and so on. It's all one thought Jesus spoke here, and that is so crucial for understanding context. But anyway, let's dive into what we have here for today. He starts off in verse 1 of chapter 16. These things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known me excuse me not they have not known the father nor me but these things i have told you that when the time comes you may remember that i told you of them and these things i did not say to you at the beginning because i was with you verse 5 now i go away to him who sent me and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin, because they do not believe in me of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you see me no more, of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I have said he will take of mine and declare to you. A lot of powerful truth here in chapter 16, just these few verses here. Jesus warns his disciples of persecution from the world and from religious leaders. And we see Jesus was dealing with some persecution from religious leaders at that time. They were questioning him. They were um, disregarding everything he said. They rejected what he was teaching. The religious leaders were not expecting the Messiah to be what Jesus was. They were expecting the Messiah to be a more of a earthly ruler rather than what Jesus Christ came to do. And Jesus Christ fulfilled every Old Testament prophecy. And Jesus even warns them that these religious leaders will expel them from their own synagogues. And I want to point you to, and I have to pull up the scripture here, in the book of Acts, 
we see this fulfilled in Acts chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Now as they spoke to the people, the priest, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead, and they lay hands on them and put them in custody the next day, for it was already evening. We see this fulfilled and we see this continuing to happen today. If you follow any organization that does missionary work, that supports missions, you will see the statistics of Christian persecution on the rise in various countries across the globe. And I believe one of these days that this is going to become a normal thing in America. You know, thank God we have our freedoms today, but I believe that they are going to be slowly stripped away. You know, today, you know, there are legislations that are co trying to be put forth to make speaking out against same-sex marriage a hate crime. And they want to target churches and religious institutions. And, you know, it's not going to be long until one day that what the Bible teaches is going to be considered a hate crime. People persecute Christians because they hate the light. And we know that the light exposes. It exposes darkness. And Jesus says, if people truly knew God, they would not persecute Christians. They would not persecute them. That is such a powerful truth. In John... Chapter 17, verse 3. It says, And this is eternal life, that you may know, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I want to read that again. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Do you truly know him, and does he know you? If you have a truer relationship with him, you change, and you're continuing to change to conform to the image of Jesus Christ. That is so essential. It is so essential to know Jesus, otherwise you're in darkness like the world that was persecuting the early church. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 10-14, through 14, we read, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, and be conformed to his death, if by any means I may obtain to the resurrection from the dead. Now, excuse me, not that I have already attained or already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. That is what it's all about, people. That is what it's all about. And in... Second Peter 3.18, it says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I want to read it again. Do you know him? Because if you don't know him, you're not walking in the light. You're walking in the darkness. And we know that the world is of darkness, and the darkness of the world is is the reason why Christians are persecuted. The darkness hates the light. It hates what the light does. The light exposes the darkness. It reveals things that are hidden in darkness, which is sin. We see in verses 5 through 11 that Jesus talks about the Helper that he is going to send when he goes back to the Father. And I want to share a few verses regarding this from John chapter 14, verse 16, where Jesus says, And I will pray to the Father, and he will send to you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. 
you know, we need to realize as believers, we have a helper, the Holy Spirit, who is abiding with us forever. He is always abiding with us. We need to take comfort in that. And in John chapter 15, verse 26, it says, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And we also know in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, it talks about how the Spirit does intercession for us. The Holy Spirit performs intercession for the believers. And we read back here in John chapter 16 that the Holy Spirit, in verse 8, it tells us he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment and of sin. The Holy Spirit, one of his jobs is to convict the world of sin. And let me say this, because there are some Preachers like Joseph Prince who says the Holy Spirit won't convict you. Yes, the Holy Spirit will convict you. That is his job. Jesus says that right here. And, you know, Joseph Prince is one of the people that preaches a greasy grace message. But the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. The Holy Spirit is the one involved in salvation. People don't get saved because someone used scare tactics regarding hell, but rather through a gospel message proclamation, someone is convicted by the Holy Spirit to turn and repent to Christ Jesus. There are some people who think they are saved because someone scared them into praying a prayer to get out of hell or talked them into praying a prayer to live a easy life. But all in all, they did not truly mean anything they prayed because they had no true conviction of sin they s and they didn't see their need for a savior you know for someone to truly be saved they number one need to see their need for a savior and you know if you are preaching you know come to jesus and everything will be easy that is not going to produce genuine salvation that is not. That is a prosperity gospel message, and that needs to be rejected in the highest of terms because it is mainstream. You see it being propagated over Christian television, such as TBN. That is majority of what you see in the mainstream of Christian um, media. You know, look at what we have with Christian books. It's mostly what's popular, what's top selling, is prosperity driven is prosperity driven and when we evangelize people we need to tell them that there is a judgment to come and that everyone is going to have to give an account before god and we need to point to them like hey no one is righteous we all have sinned jesus christ came to pay the price for all of our sins and you know we have to rely on the holy spirit when we give a, mo a uh, gospel proclamation. We have to rely on the Holy Spirit to work through us so that people can be convicted by the Holy Spirit, not convicted by their emotions, but truly convicted by the Holy Spirit and have godly sorrow, because that is what brings salvation. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 31 says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And you know, that's one of the things that's lacking today is a fear of God. You know, people in people in churches take it very lightly how, how God takes sin so seriously. God takes sin so seriously that he sent his only son to die a gruesome death in our place. And in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 it says, And as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had power over death. That is the devil. We know Jesus Christ defeated the devil. We see that here in verse 11. Jesus says, Because the ruler of this world is judged as talking about the devil. He is the prince, the power, the ruler of the air. 
you know, we need to have this perspective of the devil. We need to have the perspective that he is already judged. That Jesus already defeated him. And you know, there's gonna be one there's gonna be a final battle between the devil and God and you know, with the end times when everything's fulfilled and Christ returns. That'll be the final say there. But we need to realize, we need to pray from a prayer place of victory in Christ Jesus because the devil is defeated in the name of Jesus Christ and we need to live in that reality in our prayer life, people. In verses 12 through 15, one of the things we have to understand here is he says in verse 12, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. The disciples were not fully matured in their faith at that time. And we know at that point the New Testament was not fully completed. And we see that the Holy Spirit was to reveal revelation to the disciples and apostles at that time in the first century church. And, you know, we see that Peter wrote parts of the New Testament. You know, the Apostle Paul came along. Realize this, that the full counsel of God's word was completed with the apostles, the, tw the original twelve. However, that does not mean that the power of God has changed. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, some people say, well, the gifts of the Spirit have ceased because of the twelve apostles. That's not so. If it was so, then why would Scripture say Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? The Holy Spirit is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I want to take a balance this concerning prophecy because some people will go to an extreme, and there are certain extremes out there that think, you know, if someone has a gift of prophecy, what they are saying is on the same level of authority as Scripture. And let me say, you know, if you have the gift of prophecy and God gives you a word, that word is not on the same level as Scripture because all Scripture is infallible. All Scripture is God breathe. There is no errors within scripture. But, you know, it is a different a difference with prophecy within the gifts of the Spirit. And I want to point this out here that we have the full counsel of God in God's word. In Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 it says, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in past times to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. The prophecy that comes out today through the gifts of the Holy Spirit is not on the same level as Scripture, meaning it doesn't have the same authority as Scripture. You know, if someone gives you a prophetic word, realize this, that it doesn't have any authority over you like Scripture does. And there is no new revelation today in Christianity. Now, let me differentiate. There is simply a return or a unveiling of what was believed by the early church. And I believe God is revealing things to people that is already in his word. There are clearer understandings of what was written in God's word being revealed to people. But that doesn't mean it's a new revelation, of course. You know, we're not adding books to the Bible or anything like that. And, you know, just because someone claims to be giving a prophetic word does not always mean it's from God. Many so-called prophets let their emotions get in the way and people get all hyped up about it. You know, we have, as Christians, over the past few years, we have witnessed some of the very worst things take place in the Pentecostal and Charismatic Word of Faith movements, such as the presidential prophecies of 
2020. The so-called prophets at that time stated that Trump would win the 2020 election and serve a second term from 2020 to 2024. There were many so-called prophets who jumped on this bandwagon. And obviously we see that Trump did not become president for a second term in a row. Um, you know, it's clear he's running a second time, and that's a whole other discussion there. But we realize this, that there was false prophecy in many camps across Christianity. There was false prophecy, and that was one of the very worst things that could have taken place in the name of Christ. And that was one of the worst things I have witnessed thus far in my lifetime being done in the name of Christ. And the New Testament is, is clear. The prophecy is not about predicting elections, but it is about edification, exaltation, exhortation. We need to get back to the Bible, people. Don't go along with some popcorn prophets or some new um, emotion-driven movement that's taking place. We need to get back to the basics. We need to get back to the basics. That we have the full counsel of God's word. We need to let that be our solid foundation. Because, you know, many people lost their peace when the 2020 election results were, were finalized. And, you know, I know there's a lot of discussion surrounding I'm not getting into that in, that teach, in, this, in this teaching. Because currently we are dealing with President Biden right now, and that's all I will say about that. But realize this, there is false prophecy in the camp. And it's very similar to what we see in Jeremiah chapter 5, verses in verse 31. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule by their own power. My people love to have it so. But what will you do in the end? Many people love these types of prophecies still they still follow them for whatever the reason and you know we need to use some common sense with discernment here according to the word of god we need to use some biblical discernment with these things that are taking place in the name of christ do not trust every spirit but test the spirits according to the word of god be rooted in the word of god people be so rooted in the word of god because, you know, if you're regularly studying your Bible and in the Word of God and praying regularly, you're not going to fall privy to deception. And lastly, in Romans chapter 8, verse 17, it says, And if we, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. We share as joint heirs with Jesus Christ and God, for, and we are glorified with him through him. And that's our ultimate hope. So, you know, as we go through persecution, realize this, we, that we have the helper. Jesus sent the helper. The disciples here we see were disappointed. They were grieved that the physical presence of Jesus was going to go away. But Jesus says, do not worry, I am sending you a helper who's going to reveal to you things and help you grow in your walk with me and work through you mightily. We see that here, and that should inspire us to press onward. And we have so and you know we have so many tools at our disposal. You know, look right now, this is Bible Gateway's website right here. Many resources at your disposal right now. And you know, we have the Holy Spirit, the teacher of all teachers. The teacher leads us into all truth. We are without excuse to explore the depths of God and then to share it with others, people. So press onward in Christ Jesus. And you know, if persecution does come, stand firm on Jesus Christ. Take a stand for him, for him to be glorified through your life and to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Okay, and that is the last bit of this teaching. I hope you enjoyed this teaching and this has been an encouragement to you and has 
build up your faith in the Lord, be sure to give this video a like down below, subscribe as well, and then also share this on your social media. God bless you and have a great week. Okay, and if you would like to learn more about me and check out my other teachings as well as blog posts, you can go to my website, steadfast-ztm.com. I post on there regularly, and you can also subscribe to a newsletter. There is a page there to look at missionaries. I would encourage you to donate to as well, as well as other links to other teachers of the Word of God that I personally follow myself and I encourage you to follow as well and there's some other resources on there for Christian living and studying the Word of God. Additionally, I have a devotional available on the fruits of the Spirit. The print version is currently $7 and the ebook version is $2. I highly encourage you to check that out. It is a very um, fundamental teaching and it's very easily laid out for you to understand and apply to your life. Also, I would like to encourage you to pray for CMI Global. I'm a part of that ministry fellowship there. I'm credentialed through them, and CMI Global is a ministry fellowship that helps equip and establish and strengthen the local church. So please join me in praying for leadership as well as provision and blessing for all the other ministers and churches within CMI Global and the website uh, cmiglobal.info is available for more information or if you would like to donate to them. I'd also like to talk to you about the School of Discipleship through endurehardship.org slash SOD which is where you can check it out. I attended this program, and I'll be a graduate of this two-year program as of May, at the end of May 2023. If you are looking for sound Christian teaching and discipleship, I highly encourage you to check this program. You can do it from anywhere. They do weekly Zoom meetings for you. If you enroll in the teachings are awesome. Um, they will help strengthen your walk with the Lord and help you build a lifestyle of discipleship, which is very important. This is for anybody, whether or not you want to be in ministry or not. I believe this is crucial for any Christian. There is just so much given in this school here. It has touched my life, and I know it has touched others, and it's uh, led by Dr. J.P. Price. You can find out more about this school here. I'd highly encourage you to check it out. It's very affordable, very reasonable. Again, I would highly encourage you to check this out, and I'm sure it will be a blessing for you as well, and share it with others. You might know somebody that wants to go through discipleship or go through some training to be better prepared for ministry. This is the place to do it at, and they definitely Dr. J.P. Price and the other instructors with this program do a very good job of pouring into all the students I know has helped me, and I trust it will also help others and be a blessing to others, and God is definitely using this program here.